All right, we are here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin, and more importantly, we're at the Cocoon Nursery. Already I can see that the worms have started to make holes in the paper above here, so I'm expecting to see quite a bit of worms. And it's been a couple weeks since I've checked on it. Look at that, already I'm seeing some babies. And the Vermi Hut is right underneath this Cocoon Nursery, so I'm just taking these worms and putting them right in there. I put a little strawberry top in last night to see if I can coax some of them up. So let's see what we've got. And it looks like we have a couple, or at least one right there. And here's a banana peel that I put in probably a week ago, just to kind of entice them. I've also put some tea leaves in here. And then I also put a little bit of cardboard just to see if they needed some bedding because I saw the newspaper had holes in it. All right, so let's dig in here and see if we see any more. Such rich castings. These castings are fantastic. A little baby and one that's a little bit older. All right, I probably missed some that you all probably saw, but I'm gonna set this back up and we'll get into our regularly scheduled feeding. All right, so we have a little bit of the babies making their way off. I'm just gonna help them out. And you'll notice I put a new newspaper in here because the other newspaper had been eaten away. And in today's feeding, we're gonna check on a couple things. First, we did some holiday cheer bedding, so I wanna see how that looks. And then we put a banana blossom in here, a banana flower, and we wanna see if that does any better than a banana peel does. Certainly the banana itself would do better, but the banana peel versus the banana blossom. And I'm already seeing some of the holiday cheer shreds going on right here. And then finally, I wanna see how that compostable recyclable tray is, and it's right there. So let's start getting in here. And I see lots of beautiful castings on top, which is wonderful. This bin is starting to make the transition to having more castings than bedding, and I love when it transitions like that. This looks like could be part of that banana blossom, but let's kind of dig through here a little bit and see if we can get to it. And right away we're seeing worms, which is great. These trays definitely invite the worms for a party, that's for sure. Being a few days before New Year's, they're getting their holiday cheer on still. All right, lots of worms, that's good. That's good, I may go underneath this. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go underneath it and see if the integrity of it is still intact. Whoa, <laughs> look at that. That was just from the side from underneath. So lots of worms right there. Almost, a, oh man, lots of worms. So they are still enjoying this. And I wonder if that banana blossom had a lot of liquid in it and kind of released it down in here. So let's go underneath. And sure enough, lots of really chunky worms all in there. Let me just backfill so we have a place to dump this. This bin really has just so many worms. All right, there's some more of that holiday cheer construction paper that I put in here. And sure enough, basically the integrity of this tray is done. That's great. That means it is compostable. So let's just kind of go in here and see what we have the cardboard or the construction paper is all nice and moist and they are definitely making their way all in here. Look at that. Oh man, let's just do a time lapse real quick. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if my finger is steady enough, but right on the end of there is a cocoon. Not sure if it's a red wriggler or a blue worm cocoon, but pretty cool. So let's just kind of go in here. This was the tomato stems and they almost made little stars out of them. They went in between and got all the flesh and all that's left is the fibers out of there. But let's see if we can find that banana blossom. I am not seeing it. And we put a pretty sizable blossom in there. Let me see, it's gotta be in here somewhere. Surely they couldn't have eaten the whole thing. Let's see. I'm not seeing it anywhere. 
I mean, it was the red petal part, and then within it was some of the bananas, some really tiny bananas in there. But it looks like they really attack that thing. It's got to be in here. It's got to be. Let me just kind of go through the different areas here, make sure I didn't pass it up. This tray is really falling apart. Just kind of the hard parts on the, the edge are all that's left that's staying intact. I'm not finding it. This is where it would have been, but no banana flower. Possibly this. This feels very fibery. I bet you this is it. I mean, they have eaten the flesh from in between the fibers right here. I think this is it. This must be. This is the banana blossom. I'll go back and look and see if there's anything else that this could be, but I'm pretty sure this is the banana blossom. They ate in between every fiber that was in here, and it is gone. This is just barely staying together, almost like a spider web right there. I don't know if you can see the individual fibers, but... That's pretty remarkable. They really like this much faster than a banana peel would have gone. Let me see if there's any more of it. I'm not finding it. That's pretty amazing. So there you go. If you have a banana plant and you want to put the blossom in your worm bin, they will eat it. I think it's a delicacy, or at least people eat it in the regions where you can grow bananas. The blossom itself. All right, so let's go ahead and dig through here and see how the rest of the bin is going and kind of aerate it out. And then we'll reset the feeding zone. All right, we'll just go corner to corner. And I mean, just, just look at this. Every handful, tons of worms. Absolutely tons of worms. So we'll go all the way over to here. And the castings, look at the difference. The difference between where we were even just a week ago, but certainly when we started to now, there's just so many castings. And I was running into the toilet paper tubes and I'm only finding small sections of those, but I mean, just look at that. Big old chunky worms. The red wigglers are the ones with the bulging clitellum. And right here, oh, I'm, I just knocked it, but there was a cocoon right there. But look at that. They are just, they're reproducing, they are eating. This is just a fantastic worm bin. I think last time I mentioned that I was going to put another tray on and I still am planning it, but I wanted to check the cocoon nursery. So we'll just have to wait for that other tray till next time. But here's some of the toilet paper rolls, but just look at that. Look at these worms. Just fantastic. This population is probably reaching its max for what can fit in this tray. They probably would love to have another level on this vermi hut and right now it has three individual trays like this on it and i want to go get up to four i always need to keep one out because it's my sifter the holes down here i don't know if you can see but the holes down here when this is empty act as a sifter for my other bins the volume here is pretty high and this makes sense this tray has been on the top and actively feeding for 43 days however it was underneath getting inoculated for 39 days as the bottom tray all i had done was put cardboard shreds in it that were had been wetted down and look at that that's so cool like a little worm road I just interrupted there a little worm interstate but yeah it had been on the bottom and all it had been done to it was soak the cardboard shreds and then just put it underneath and any kind of liquid or drippings or even worms could squirm down there and they helped to get the microbes going and then underneath this is one that we will harvest all right last corner here and we'll just kind of aerate that and then we'll push everything down and we'll be ready for our feeding. All right. So I'm going to try and put this compostable fruit tray, rip it up a little bit maybe, but we'll put that in the center so that they keep working on it. And we will start our feeding. All right, just making the hole in the middle. And then we'll kind of break this up, put it in there. And we'll add just a little bit of bedding. We don't need a whole lot. And then this is what I had in mind for the feeding. Lots of greens, some strawberries, some forbidden things like citrus, which you can just put in in moderation. They're not forbidden. But let's put in some lettuce. Put in a couple of pasta shells. 
I've got some banana peel and then some potato skins. I think this is a pear that went bad or section of it did. Some more forbidden onion, but they'll do just fine with that amount. And then some celery and we'll just dump the rest in there. All right, there we go. Good feeding here. We'll add our grit and coffee. Some grit first, that's just pulverized eggshells. And then our coffee. All right, I hope you've all have enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit the like button, I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and I've got two other worm bins that I do different things in, different experiments, that kind of thing. And right now I've been checking to see if things are compostable. So in my other indoor tiny worm bin, I've got a little burlap sack from the bracelet packaging that I have here. I got one for Christmas. So go ahead and check those out. Hit subscribe. I appreciate that. And I hope you all are having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now. And I hope everybody is doing well, and I hope you all have a great day. What do I usually say? I hope you all are having a great day, and happy vermicomposting. <laughs>